I have created my compute instances in Azure Machine Learning. Now the question is, can I use these created compute instances out of Azure ML? Let's say Jupyter Notebook, VS Code, or even my own customized IDE or application. Shall we figure this out? If yes, then let's go. Hello everyone, this is MG, hope you're doing great and welcome to another video which we're going to talk about how you can come up with your own customized application or IDE to be able to use them while you are attached to Azure Compute Instances or Azure ML Compute Instances. That means I can have my own IDE, my own customized application, but the codes and developments that I have, let's say Python or R language, will be executed over Azure ML Compute Instances. That means I can go beyond just Azure ML UI to be able to leverage those great capabilities of computes. Let's check it out. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, here I have logged into my Azure Machine Learning Workspace and I assume you're already familiar with this platform. I have created a ton of videos about different capabilities, applications of Azure ML for training, deploying models, so on and so forth. But here the part that I want to mainly focus on is Compute Instances. And I'm going to tell you why. So Compute Instances are certainly needed for, for creating and developing your codes and executing it, right? So the way that you create as of now, you just navigate to Azure Machine Learning Studio and on the left side, you will see that there's a Compute section here. So I have no computes, I'm gonna create the first one. And there you go, uh, I wanna give it a name, let's say MG test 01. The location is based on the place that I have created my Azure ML workspace. Here I can specify I wanna go with GPU machine or CPU. Plus, if you're gonna go with CPU here, which is my choice, you can see a variety of different options based on the number of cores, amount of RAM, storage, whether it's memory optimized or general purpose or disk optimized. And you can also see the specified price per hour. So this is the price you're gonna pay, the cost you're gonna pay, each hour that you leverage this, this compute instance. So if you forget to shut it down and you don't have any schedule for this compute to get shut down without any activity, you will get charged per hour that you're just running this compute. Let's go with the, the default selected one here, two cores, 14 gigabyte, and I go to advanced settings. There you go. So here there are a variety of different advanced settings that we can focus on here. For example, if you wanna shut down this compute and you don't wanna pay for extra in case you forget to shut down this compute here we can add the schedule let's say after 5 p.m i want to make sure this compute is automatically shut down you can enable such access virtual network so if you have virtual network you can deploy your, your compute inside that virtual network as you know you cannot share compute instances between multiple people in azure machine learning so this is the one i'm creating for myself or if i'm admin i can assign it to another user but not multiple people. If you have a setup script, you can provision it here, sort of upload it in your local machine or put down your command line here. As soon as you create your compute, this setup script is gonna be executed. And assign and manage identity. This is gonna give a sort of an ID to your compute instance can access other Azure services for let's say authentication and permission perspective. And the part that I'm gonna focus on here is adding application. So what does that mean? Now I'm creating this compute instance. Let's say here's a CPU machine. So the only way that I can use this compute to write my codes is coming to Azure ML and write my note uh, codes in this notebook here to be able to use this compute instance. The answer is no. And that application can be your, your favorite IDE or any IDE. We will see that how you can use Jupyter Notebook, VS Code, and even create your own here R Studio, which is I'm gonna create it quickly. So you have the choice. Let's say you are maybe working in a startup company and you have created your own customized company IDE or application. So can, I, can you still use that application or front end IDE, but it's still on back end, utilize the compute engine of here, this compute instance? The answer is yes, you can, and you can add it here actually. So let me click on add. 
Here you can add your any custom application or the other one which is really Posit Workbench. So what is Posit Workbench to give you shortly quickly what it is? So it is formerly known as R Studio, but now Posit is, is beyond just R Studio. R Studio is part of Posit with so many great capabilities you can grab. If you can check out their solutions, they not only just comes to Azure, but they're also provided and, uh, available in different cloud providers. So if I click on Azure, it is talking about some potential benefits of why Post-it Workbench on Azure ML can be useful. So you can use it for drivers that connect to data sources or importing data connectivity. It will provide you some pre-installed packages and also it will provide you multiple R and Python sessions, right? But in order to now add it as an application to Azure ML, the place that we're talking, you need to bring your own license which i don't have it so here i'm gonna go with custom for now and let's say here i want to bring our studio as an ide to to this complete instance right so i can type just r studio right oops so many typos okay now target port I want to use R Studio. I want to use the open source version of R Studio that comes with an Docker image, and Docker that Docker image is expecting the target port port to be 8787, and you can use the same thing in, in publish port or even change if you want. Now the Docker image. So the Docker image, which is like an open source and coming for R Studio. Actually, I have copied the, the path of that, so I will add the link of the reference in the video description. You can copy this. And environment variable in case uh, there's a specific variable defined in this Docker image that you have to put as an, a value for that variable, you can specify here. If you want to mount to the default storage that has some artifacts related to this, you can add your path here, which for us, not really. I'm just grabbing this Docker image. And that's it. I want to say create. So now I'm expecting a compact instance that is coming with some applications and look at that. So VS Code, Notebook and stuff, they, they come by Azure ML Compute instance. I do not need to specify them. So that means if I click on VS Code, it will launch the VS Code ID that I have in my local machine to run my codes, but using this Compute instance out of this Azure ML UI. If I click on Notebooks, it will use the Azure ML UI, which is a notebook here. And our studio, this is the name I specified when I was just right now creating this custom application. So I'm expecting when I click on our studio, it should open up our studio for me, a separate IDE, but on backend, it is using this compute instance. So I'm gonna pause the recording and come back in just a couple of minutes. Right, I am back and look at that. My computer is created successfully, it is running and applications. Wow, there's a list. The only one that I added is R Studio. So let's check that out. It can be your own, again, custom ID or application. So let me click on that. I hope it will be open to success. There you go. I have R Studio right now. Now I can start coding, but the code will be executed over Azure ML, but I'm no longer in Azure ML workspace or notebook, right? Perfect. Now getting back, this is not just the only application. Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook, VS Code, Terminal, and Azure ML Notebook, these are the default one that comes with Compute Instance. So let's say if I click on Jupyter, Jupyter Notebook is one of the most popular IDs that you can develop your interactive code, and there you go. Here I can have a list of my notebooks, just upload ones and create a new one, and then let it run over the Compute Instance that I have here. And VS Code, if I click on it, it will launch my uh, VS Code that I have installed in my local machine or laptop. And last one is terminal. You can have access to the terminal Ubuntu machine here. And it has so many packages already installed. For example, Git is already installed. So many data science packages already installed. So you don't need to have them installed again. And if you want to access the terminal, you have it as well. So that was, that was a pretty short video. Just talking about mainly that the fact you can have your own custom um application here i use our studio because i don't have any custom application but that can be any custom application that you can make it a docker image and have the port getting connected and upload it sort of to this company instance to be able to run it that's it and i hope you enjoyed the video smart people learn from everyone in everywhere average people learn from their experience and stupid people already know all the answers 
Wishing you the greatest moments, my friends. Dream big, believe in yourself, and take action.